In this lesson we will do something a bit more elaborate and uh, that doesn't necessarily mean complicated, just a little bit more elaborate setup and we will use some espresso to achieve uh, the desired effect. First, I have to explain what I'm trying to achieve, otherwise uh, it uh, won't make any sense at all. So, what I want to achieve here is the Doppler effect. To be more specific, in astronomy, when uh, an object is uh, moving towards you, then it really shifts towards the blue end of the spectrum. Also, if it is uh, traveling from you in another direction, it uh, shifts to the red side of the spectrum. And I'm pretty sure you can uh, relate to that on another level where you're familiar with the Doppler effect when uh, maybe a car passes by you, so then the sound waves are... Let me just demonstrate that quickly, that would be really interesting. So, when a car passes like this, let's say that this is you, the sound waves are traveling... Uh, let's say the car initial position is this, the sound waves are more stretched and you can hear the lower frequency noise. As it approaches you, so for example here, those sound waves really become compressed and then you can hear that on a higher frequency. I'm pretty sure you are familiar with the effect. And here we will try to recreate something that is very similar but works with the light on an astronomical level. And uh, you can see I'm really trying to cover as much ground as I can with these uh, generic setups to help you get into MoGraph and technical developing you can do with Cina 4D. This uh, is uh, one really nice setup and probably one of the most complex we will do, so watch carefully. Here we have a Sun, which is also a star, Earth and the orbit. And notice that the orbit is an ellipse shape, just as in the uh, real world. And uh, I also have some materials that I prepared, which are fairly simple. And uh, we will start this by solving the very first problem. And that is that I want the Earth to orbit the Sun. So once again, we will gradually build our setup from the most obvious starting point. So I will add a cloner my Earth and set this move to Object and I will drop this Orbit Spline inside. Of course we just want one Earth. I will enable this smooth rotation and set this to even so. We don't have any problems with uh, this Earth speeding up or slowing down on this spline and uh, let's set some rate here. Let's try with 10 and hit play. And that is really too fast. Let's try maybe 5 and uh, this is far more acceptable. So let's go back and uh, I think it's good time to texture this guy. So sun should be sun and uh, I will apply this earth material to my earth and I will just change the projection to spherical and uh, it really doesn't matter since it's uh, upside down. Let's hit play and uh, this is not really the point of this uh, lesson. But uh, you know what, this will probably <laughs> bug me later so I really have to change that. So I will just uh, do a simple hack here. So now it will be all right and uh, we can continue. So let me just concentrate once again. Okay, so we have our Earth happily orbiting our sun, but uh, maybe I will also add a time effector for this guy, just uh, for this Earth to also revolve uh, around its own axis. So let's do just that. So time effector and uh, it's happily revolving and uh, we could maybe increase this to let's say 180, so times 2. And uh, that's actually really good, but uh, maybe in opposite direction, like this. Oh, it's actually fine in 180. So this would be really acceptable. Let me stop this, go back. So 
we have now all necessary things done as far as the orbiting and the earth spinning done. Now here comes the fun part and that is how to create that wave in between the sun and the earth and uh, you're probably guessing we will do that by a tracer so load up a tracer notice that my cloner is selected so the cloner will be automatically inside i'll turn off this trace vertices and we'll drop our sun also inside and the reason for it is i want to connect these two guys and i can access the earth which is a clone only through cloner so i will set this to immediate of clones and this will be connect all objects so now the spline will be traced and created between the earth and the sun and in this case the earth is a clone of this cloner object i really hope this makes sense so now i have the spline and that is really good because i can deform the spline now let's hit play and see the result and uh, the things work as expected so let's go back and uh, yes, this is a little bit of a problem with the tracer so it's uh, once again a priority issue so you see once i hit this button the tracer stays until i refresh once again and we can solve this by putting this tracer to be executed at the end so let's try now go back and it really works as it should i think it's good time to create a sweep for this guy because uh, we really want to add a certain material to that uh, wave so let's create a profile like this and uh, we should lower this down maybe to even one let's try two i think that would be maybe 1.5 would be exactly what we need and uh, now we will deform this tracer so we will do that with formula effector so i'm holding the shift key and the formula effector becomes a child of a tracer and uh, if i hit play well, pretty much nothing will happen and the reason for it is we are not using any of deformation modes i will just disable this uh, cloner rate because i don't want to really play catch with this sphere and uh, in this formula effector i will enable first the object so i want to show you some differences if i hit play now you see this guy is really not doing what it should do we want to deform the points of this tracer spline and uh, of course we want, don't want to scale anything and uh, here we should go in y so like this now this is not exactly the effect i was looking for and here what i was saying at the very beginning that you really have to know sina for the well before tackling mograph is uh, essential so now even though we set it everything correctly this spline is not really deforming properly and that is because this type of spline is linear without any intermediate points so if we set this to let's say maybe cubic only subdivided mode will give us what we want i hope that will be understandable if you will try something else maybe adaptive or maybe uniform this may seem as a good result but actually it won't be once you increase the strength parameter on formula effector so now it's uh, working really solid and uh, maybe we'll just change some values here so i will double this so 720 let's see how that works and uh, that's uh, really solid maybe just this time should be a little bit uh, slower let's try something like uh, 70 maybe maybe 79 would be okay yes that is uh, really good so now we have 
our spline that acts like a wave and we will use this to depict that Doppler shift and I really hope you are still with me so we will once again enable this rate option and we'll press play and uh, that spline that wave will happily bounce off from the earth and from the sun so let's add a generic material let me stop this go back and uh, I'll rename this to Doppler and uh, for this guy we will just enable the luminance channel and leave it at white and uh, you will see later why I did that because uh, I will control this material through Express. So, and now comes the tricky part. This uh, will be probably the hardest uh, part of this lesson that is dealing with Express. So, how to color this uh, wave according to the distance between Sun and the Earth. Now, let's uh, simplify things. And first, I will drop everything inside a null. I'll also call this uh, Doppler. And we will add an Expresso tag to it and uh, just modify this uh, layout a bit so we have a little bit more of a real estate, just like uh, this. This would be good enough. To solve this one, what I had in mind is uh, really quite simple. We have to use and compare the distances. So let's uh, actually doodle that. So we have to compare the distances between the Sun and the Earth and based on the distance we should drive the colors into our material, this one. So if it is uh, closer, if the gap is smaller, then the object should receive more of a blue color. If it is in this position, so the gap is uh, wider, then it should receive more of a red color. So it really shifts towards one of these colors. And once again, if you haven't watched volume 3, consider doing so because uh, I deal with Expresso in depth and uh, this can be a little bit difficult to follow if you don't have that knowledge from volume 3 or from any other source. So first I will drop a sun in my Expresso window, then I will drop a cloner because if I want to access this earth, which is a clone, I have to work with a cloner. So I will extract the object information from my cloner. I will use a motion graphics data node. So if you want to extract anything or any information from the cloner regarding clones, you have to use data nodes. So I want to access the specific clone and uh, the specific clone in this case is this index value of the clone. So if you have, uh, let's say, zillion clones, you can pick the clone with this index value. So in my case, I all set by default value. So the first clone is zero, this one, so this earth, and I want to add a position information. And uh, what I will do now, I will compare the position information from both earth and the sun. So in this case of the sun, I will use a global position. So just to make sure, we are using global coordinates and we will find that distance with this let me just try to load from here because I believe you would be able to see calculate distance because the screen is cut off uh, due to recording and uh, you see I have two inputs and uh, I will load position from clone value in this case the earth and global position of the sun and I will search for results. So I'm loading a result node. I can also do that with this uh, system operators, but I'm really low on uh, 
screen space, so I would rather load them with this right click menu. So let's now find out the distance between two guys. And this distance is now 300 units. I can enable this animation refresh. So if I hit play, these guys will update live. So you can see it really hits 200 on this position, 300 here. So it really works. It's calculating the distance properly. For the second part of the setup, we said that we will drive the color value of this material with other colors. So let's first drop that material in Express. So you can see you can load these guys also like this. And uh, I will find inside material this luminance channel inside Express. So I'm ex extracting the exactly the same value. So I'm uh, finding the luminance and I'm extracting the luminance color, which will be driven by other colors. So if I want to use two colors, which are in this case red and blue, then I will load them as a constant. So first I will load the first constant node change the data type to color, simply pick a color. In this case, uh, that would be red. And I will copy it and uh, choose a blue color. Now I have to tell somehow this guy, this luminance color to take information from these guys. And I have to mix those two guys based on something. And uh, let's try like this espresso. Calculate mix. It's a really a little bit of a problem as uh, you are low on uh, screen real estate. And uh, I will use this mixing factor to mix between those two colors because you can see it has two inputs. And uh, I will change the data type to color. You have to be aware of this. Uh, stuff in Expresso because it can really drive you insane. So this is my first color. This is my second. And uh, the mixing factor is in percentage. So if I connect this guy now, it will be completely red because the input one corresponds to a zero. If I will play with this, it will gradually become input two. So that's really cool, but uh, we have to combine these two setups. So here we have a proper distance calculated and here we are able to mix colors. And if our mix node only accepts percentage in this case, then we have to find a way to convert these values to percentage. So in our case, the maximum distance should be 0% and the minimum distance should be 100%. So we can do that by a range mapper. So I'm loading a range mapper. The screen is cut off, which is uh, really annoying a little bit. So let's connect these guys. And uh, we know from the distance mode that, uh, that our maximum distance is 300 and our minimum distance here in this position is 200. So that value will output a percentage. So now we will connect output as a mixing factor. So let's give it a shot and hit play and see what happens. So that is actually really, really great. Let me stop this, go back. And I will reset my recording layout like this. And uh, you will be able to see that in a full glory. So now you can see the wave is becoming bluer because it's shorter and vice versa. It's becoming more red because it is uh, further away from the star. And uh, I hope you really enjoyed this one. This is the insight into really, really advanced technical developing. So let's without further delay, 
proceed to our next project.